Hello and good afternoon and welcome to another event where we're going to be talking about the items that are needed for continuous venovenous hemofiltration using a standalone blood pump. The purpose of this session is really to really give you an idea before you get started what are the things that you need to do and what you need to look for before you start priming the set or the extracorporeal circulation for CVVH or continuous venous, venovenous hemofiltration using a standalone blood pump. So, what we're going to need first, which is the most important part, is to say a disclaimer. The disclaimer has to say that any tubing that we are using that is manufactured by Next Stage, which is the streamlined set, has not been approved by Next Stage for the purpose of this uh, extracorporeal circuit. Also, the standalone blood pump manufactured by Fresenius has not been approved for this particular utilization, which is a standalone using an electrical uh, voltage that is ranging between 9 to 24 volts. So both of these items have not been used and this is a disclaimer. So the first, what we need to have when we start grabbing and collecting items for the continuous venovenous hemofiltration, extracorporeal circulation, is a set of tubing that are called the streamlined tubing. This tube set is made by next stage and if you look at the bottom of the screen you will see the address to the website where the next stage manufacture these tubings. Each bag has to be sealed. If it's open that means it's no longer sterile and do not use that set. So this is a set that looks like this. It's called one set of streamlined tubing and that set has four major elements. Again I repeat it has four major elements that are essential for the extracorporeal circulation. The first element that is present is what we call the arterial limb. And the arterial limb is a long tube that has two ends. This is the patient end. The patient end has a clamp, a red clamp. Also has a patient end but on the tip of the patient end, there is a small plastic piece that looks like this. That plastic piece is actually a connector between this end and the intravenous priming set. So it needs to stay, it has a lid, so you can, uh, you can have that piece as such, and it's actually made, came like this. and that slit is closed. So when you open the set, it's going to be like this, and then there's a little lever here, and you pull that lever backwards, and that opens. So the first piece that is essential is this piece, which is the connector, male-to-male -male connector. This is the arterial end, or the arterial tube, that has a patient end, red clamp, that easily you can clamp and open and it has also a um, what we call the pod this is the pod which is the pressure oscillating diaph diaphragm but before the pod there is the medicine port uh, the first port after the patient's uh, uh, arterial end, we use this port for heparin infusion. Then this is called the pump segment, and this is the hemofilter end. So this is the first part of the streamlined set. This is what we call the uh, lower lock, male to male lower lock, that also comes in already part of it. This is the venous part of the um, set that has also a um, hemofilter end. And the hemofilter end has a lid and a cover. So it has a hemofilter end. This is a drip chamber. And this is the patient venous end. 
also it has a lower lock male-to-male uh, -male connector and it has a clamp. Now keep in mind as, if you, as we go through the priming process you will see exactly what is the utilization of each element. So this is the Venus limb and this is the IV set for IV priming. So in summary item number one is the streamlined bag. It has to be sealed has four elements, arterial limb that is red, venous limb that is blue, uh, IV set for connecting between the IV bag and the priming of the uh, whole circuit, and the lower lock end-to-end -end, uh, male connector that is extremely essential when we connect the IV. The second element that we have that is essential for the CVVH is actually um, IV bags. The first bag is going to be pure saline, normal saline, that we use and we get ready and we hang it on the IV pole for uh, priming. And that's the IV pole right here, getting it close. That is the first bag, which is normal saline for priming. We have it ready and handy. The second bag of IV normal saline is also for priming right here, it's also for priming, but the advantage of this is we have to put a thousand units of heparin in this IV bag. So the first bag is saline, pure saline, the second bag is normal saline with a thousand units only in this liter bag. And those also have to be handy and we have to number them bag number one and bag number two. So this is bag number one, we start with it first, and bag number two. The third item that we need for this process is actually syringes. We need to have four sterile IV syringes. And these syringes we're going to utilize and we have them handy and ready. They don't need to be filled with fluids, but they need to be handy. When we start priming, we really need them to, to be uh, within reach. Now another item we need as well is actually this IV pole and the IV pole has to be utilized initially for hanging the fluid for priming but then eventually we would use it as with the process uh, goes on. What also we're going to need is actually something called the hemodialysis filter holder. So this is actually a holder for the hemodialysis filter and what we use that holder for is actually we put it on the side where we can uh, put it on the pole as such. So we can hold the hemofilter through that hole. So this is a dialysis filter holder. The other thing we're going to need is we're going to need some IV pumps. Now this is a classic IV pump that uses for infusion and we're going to need three pumps if we're using heparin drip, bicarbonate drip, and saline replacement as the CVVH process continues. If we're using only peritoneal dialysis fluid, we need only two pumps. One is for heparin and one is for peritoneal dialysis infusion as a form of replacement fluid where we don't give saline and bicarbonate anymore the peritoneal dialysis fluid is becoming the replacement, including also we don't give calcium as well. So we need two pumps if we're using regular fluids uh, and peritoneal fluids. We, we need three if we're using only um, heparin, bicarbonate, and uh, saline. The other item we need, which is also essential, is actually the hemodialysis uh, catheter. Even though the hemodialysis catheter has two ends. It has an arterial end and a venous end. The arterial is red, but that's where you take to the patient, and the venous end is where you return to the patient. Both of them is an intravenous catheter. There's no arterial stick. It's a single stick inside the vein, and it's a double lumen dialysis catheter. It's preferable that it's inserted in the femoral vein or the right internal jugular vein. It is totally discouraged to be inserted in the left internal jugular 
or in the subclavian veins. The other thing we need is uh, a small hose, which is a clear hose, clear rubber hose, that is used so we can attach it of the hemofilter, where we can attach it snugly and tightly to the side port, not to the upper port, but to the side port of the hemodialysis filter where ultrafiltration is going to be collected. Now, as we connect this, the other hose we're going to be connecting is actually a Foley catheter collection uh, urine kit that we can insert this into the hose so we can collect our ultrafiltration in this graded bag so can, we can measure hourly how much fluid is being removed. We're also going to need a um, what we call a hemostat or a special dialysis hemostat where we can use to clamp this tube or we can use to clamp the tubing that is used for priming and the blood to corporeal circulation. Uh, what we need also is a black marker. The purpose of the black marker is that when we mix uh, heparin in the first in the second priming bag, when we mix heparin in the second priming bag, we can put a tape and write on it bag number two, a thousand units of heparin. Also, when we have the full heparin infusion throughout the treatment, which is about 10,000 units per liter to run at 100 cc's, and, then, and uh, have this pen handy. We also need silk tape. And that silk tape, the purpose of it is to put a tape and write on the tape on these bags and write notes for ourselves. Last but not least, in order to make this procedure and keep it clean and not messy and uh, water everywhere, we need to have what we call a bucket, which is where we can collect the fluid that we use for priming, so we need to have it handy. We don't want to be throwing water because it's almost two liters of saline that are going to be used. Now the star of this presentation and the most important piece of this uh, presentation is actually the blood pump. This is the standalone blood pump and that blood pump uh, works again through a uh, 9 volt battery or through a 16 volt car battery or a 12 volt cell phone charger or a computer charger. This cannot and should not be used with uh, 220 or 110 directly. Now, the most important thing, sometimes you may have to be creative while you're doing this. So you have to look and make sure that the pump is turning uh, with uh, clockwise. This is turning counterclockwise, so this is not where it needs to be. It has to turn clockwise to be able to be functional and pull the fluid in the right direction. Now keep in mind, if things don't work out very well and the machine is working still counterclockwise, you flip the electrical sources so that the battery you flip it, the wires and the car battery you flip as well as, well as the charger, so the pump should turn into this direction again. This is uh, not counterclockwise, but this is clockwise rotation, which is exactly how the pump should rotate. Uh, with this, I want you to uh, look at our manual, and that manual describes what we've talked about, and uh, that manual can be available, and if you really want a copy of it, you can send us a request. Our email is at the bottom of this, so we will give you a list of these items uh, needed, and you can pair it with this video so you know exactly what you need for continuous venovenous hemofiltration using a standalone blood pump, extracorporeal circulation, utilizing the Syrian National Kidney Foundation protocol, which is a unique protocol derived and uh, spearheaded by Dr. Rafai and myself. Thank you, and I wish this video would help you to help any human on the face of this earth and really save lives for patients with acute kidney injury that otherwise do not have the means 
of dialyzing if there's no dialysis machines or infrastructures.